Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to do a rear seat delete install. Give you some details on the rear seat delete build. So let's get started. First off, thanks to all my subscribers for following along on my channel. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already watched my original Goose Gear inspired rear seat delete video, go take a look before watching this video. This video is a long detailed follow up to that video showing in detail the removal of the Tacoma rear seats, installation of my rear seat delete components, as well as in-depth details on my design. I hope this video will help inspire your own build design and is useful information for removing your Tacoma rear seats. Removing the rear seats is very simple. Four 12 millimeter bolts. Remove the bolts and put them back in the bottom of the seat for safekeeping. I reused the hinges for the seats in my rear seat delete. I'll show you how that works in a minute. This way you won't lose your bolts. Remove the wider seat. These little metal tabs really help when you reinstall the back seat. And I also made an indentation in my rear seat delete to allow that tab to sit flush on my rear platform. Put your bolts back in because I did not use these in my build. Again, this so you do not lose them. Next, we're going to remove the center seat belt mount, which comes out with the larger portion of the rear seat back panel. It's a 14 millimeter. actually take a picture of this to remember the direction it goes in. I have it stored in my phone because I like to put my seats back in every once in a while. That way it's set up to the factory spec. And with this star washer it all stays together, you don't lose anything. Next, we're going to re remove the back portion of the seats. Remove these little black tabs, keep them for safekeeping. This is another 14 millimeter. two bolts in the back and then put them back in your seat because you do not need to use these again. Here's 
Here's a close up of the black tabs you remove. Remove that black tab. Loosen the 14 millimeter from the bracket. Once they're loose, you can easily remove them with your fingers. Again, put the bolts back in your seat so you do not lose them. And put the black, the black plastic cover back over it. That's it. So I'd say the worst part of this whole process is that you have to remove this smaller section of the plastic panel to remove the center seat bracket but that being said it's actually very simple so let's do that now 10 millimeter socket Three bolts hold the back piece in. Super easy to remove. We're going to put this back in here in a second, so just leave the bolts in the bottom of the tray. Do not reuse these bolts, so find a small cardboard box and put these parts in it so you do not lose these parts. I'll be using the holes from the seat bracket to mount the base of the rear seat delete panel. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So passenger side seat bracket, you do have access. So just flip back the carpet. Okay, now we're gonna put the small side of the storage container back in. I reuse these in my build. So let's do that. Put back the 10 millimeter bolts that hold it. Snug those up. Back in. Hot tip of the day. Not reinventing the wheel here, but put all your bolts in a Ziploc.
Okay, now we're 100% ready to install the rear seat delete back panel. I use five points of contact. One, two, three, four, and five to hold the back panel in. So let's do that. I'll show you how it goes in. I'm gonna show you the back side first. Three holes in the support. Those are the three front holes for the seat brackets. Your Tacoma comes st standard with one rubber bumper back there for leveling the seat, I guess. So I added three more here, here, and here, 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 and here to level the back. Here are the bumpers. One there, one there, one there, and then the existing factory bumper keeps the back panel completely flush and level. So here you have the driver side front screw hole for the seat bracket. I flip the carpet underneath to expose it. That's the center screw hole. And over there, same thing. Flip the carpet under. I think you have to make one cut in order to get this little flap. I use this heavy duty Allen screw that matches the threads of the seat brackets. Not exactly sure what it is, but it says, uh, I can't read that. But you can get these at Lowe's or Home Depot. And they should just and finger thread them in. I had to make a access hole for this one. It seems to work fine though. So I cut a little access hole in the panel here. Drop that in. I made these holes slightly oversized just to give some play in there, make your life a little easier to install these. The oversized washer makes up for that. These are just little blocks of poplar, hardwood, sort of hardwood, that I slip behind the seat bracket like this. I use a little piece of foam. A couple of screws just to hold it in place. And that'll keep your back panel from flipping forward. I made these little blocks with little indentations on the side. So they kind of catch on the bracket. Just like 
like that. make these screws too long so they penetrate and go into your plastic so be careful of that here's a close-up of the seat bracket holder not sure what to call that but it seems to work well and then let's tighten down these hand tighten as far as you can get it this one has a little more access, so it's a little easier to tighten. Okay. All tight. That's it. Solid as a rock. And that's all it takes. Now let's grab the platform and put the platform in. So here's the base. I designed this base to use the existing brackets for the flip up seats. This platform will actually flip up, but it is also held down by three screws into the base that have T-nuts. just for safety because I put my ice chest and a bunch of gear on here four nuts with lock washers so this is how it sits when it's installed now I'm going to show you how I attach it to the hinges so it can flip up and give you access to the factory storage below and as you can see my design gives you access to the factory cubbies so let's show you how to do that and you're going to want to make a hole in your plywood here for this tab because that will help you when installing the nut on your bolt don't make your bolt too long I'd say that sticks out about a half inch because you don't want it to dig into your factory plastic when your panel is down the platform is down all right let's do this And then just take a box wrench, snug them up.
I built these little stands so it supports the platform better for weight. This is for my fly rod, my four piece. So I always have it with me just in case. And it drops down onto this platform. Below these three screw holes are T-nuts. That hold the platform secure. So I can put gear, ice chest. These straps hold my ice chest in. This parachute cord just holds these from flopping around when there's no ice chest in. So there are three of these that hold the platform secure to the back panel, which is secured to the seat bracket locations. Just snug that up like that. This is the driver's side. Snug it up. Passenger side. Snug it up. So that's it. It's completely installed. It takes maybe a half an hour, 45 minutes start to finish. It's solid. You can shake the whole truck with it. It's not moving. It doesn't rattle. If you want to get to the storage below, you do have to remove these three screws, but it's super fast. That's it. Loosen them. Now I like to keep stuff in these that I don't need every day. Recovery strap. But this way you can utilize the factory storage and a rear seat delete. So I picked up this cargo net on Amazon for I don't know, 20 bucks. And it's really cool. stuff these cubbies nothing comes flying out in hard braking or off-roading if you're doing off-roading so I made these out of some old life jacket straps some life jackets my kids grew out of but they work fine
So that's the install. If you have any questions or comments, put them below. I'll put a link in the description to the cargo net. Um, everything else is just hardware, half inch plywood, smooth one side. Use some black stain to stain the plywood rather than paint so it doesn't really scratch. Some speaker cabinet type material carpet for the base to keep it quiet. Spray glue to adhere the carpet to the plywood and some staples. And then all of the hardware came from Lowe's or my garage. So let me know if you have any questions. Hope you enjoyed the look at the rear seat delete. And thanks for watching.